Welcome to the Common Good series, where we feature people and communities sharing stories and ideas for building a better normal. We are your hosts for today. I'm Brex Arevalo. I'm Raiza Javier. Our first episode is actually very timely as we celebrate the season of creation from September 1 to October 4. It is a time to renew our relationship with our creator and all of creation. We spoke with Ms. Kristin Kusanovich, founder of the Turn Climate Weeks, a faculty and student-driven initiative for climate action at Santa Clara University. In our conversation with her, we answer the question, what role does the artist play in climate action? Can you tell us a bit about TURN and what are your motivations for doing this? TURN is a one week long intensive time in the month of October and in the month of April to kind of lean in to thinking about something that's really hard for people to think about and something that people are kind of rightly afraid of on many levels to think about, to talk about, to process, um, and to admit, which is the climate crisis. So TURN, it kind of provides a space and a time to talk about climate crisis, which is a really hard topic. So people are invited to change what they're doing that week and make it be focused on the climate crisis. Christine, could you tell us more about your personal interests, your passions, and how did this idea come about? Uh, I'm in dance and theater mainly. I also teach pedagogy, um, how to teach movement and theater, dance for children. Also music theory and visual arts methods. So kind of immersed in a lot of different arts. I've been moved by a lot of great artworks to think about really huge issues in the world. Coming to this from the arts was kind of a natural leap. We're seeing all over the world, a lot of people in the humanities and the arts leading elements of the big movement towards climate action. And you also have this very high stakes interpersonal interactions with people when you're putting together a show, putting together production, when it comes to different people's voices, different people's experiences, and making it all work to create something beautiful or moving. That's the life I've had and been blessed to have. And so I thought, well, that seems to be what's missing a little bit from some of the environmentalism that I was experiencing. I talked to a lot of scientists who had a lot of emotion and a lot of passion about what the problems were in the world, but they weren't expressing that in front of their students. And I thought, well, that's kind of where the artist can come in. I saw the climate crisis as this kind of unfolding tragedy that we're causing, and we're also being subjected to it. And um, the fact that we're in both of those positions simultaneously seemed to me very dramatic. So I thought, you know, we have to call together all the disciplines to really look at this problem because it's the biggest problem I can think of in the world. So far, TURN has been very interdisciplinary, and that's I hope the plan is to continue that way. So, that, you know, a talk on religious studies, a talk from the economics point of view, a talk from engineering, a workshop on sociology, um, a music performance, a poetry reading, a combination of all these things happening for five days straight. How did you get a group of people together to join in on this sort of thing? I was very inspired by the Center for Sustainability that we have at Santa Clara, which is a long-standing center. They do things 365 days a year. They and also the Center for Arts and Humanities, they both kind of collaborated and supported this idea of me, an individual, sending out an email to all faculty, all staff at Santa Clara University, which is a Catholic Jesuit University. What I did in the fall is I wanted to make the invitation, you know, fingers crossed someone would take me up on it. And I thought maybe we'll have three events. But then I thought, you know, I think we'll create some things too. I won't just ask people to make up their own thing in your classroom, but I'll create something that's really public in case people don't want to make something up. So I created a few events like a 12 hour reading of Laudato Si, but I only invited faculty and staff and administrators. We really wanted to establish that faculty and staff could take hold of this, could change their syllabus for one day, could switch out a case study or switch out a math problem or switch out the play they were reading in, in their theater history class to something having to do with the climate crisis. And I wanted to make sure that the faculty and staff felt it was theirs, felt ownership, because they tend to be there longer than students are. 
And then in, my goal was in the spring, bring all the students in as leaders and have them lead at least a whole day, if not more of the five days, you know, see what they want to do. So 50 faculty signed up to teach something in their class that was to do with the climate crisis. And then I created with, with the help of lots of faculty members running these things, 20 different events. People just kept sending ideas in and ideas and you know, some people had speakers coming already and all they did was tweak a date and bring it into the term week because it was about climate crisis. Other people had speakers coming in that week that weren't going to talk about the climate crisis, but then they did because it was term week. So there's all these kinds of synergies building and the students would say, oh, the next one is April. So then we put out more posts on social media for April and said, students who lead clubs, whether they are environmentally focused clubs or culturally focused clubs or community focused clubs, different religiously focused clubs, come and create an event for turn. So we had 16 different student clubs and groups come together for the April turn and they created something called the Good Market. And they each had 15 minutes to pitch what their club's angle is on solving the climate crisis. It's really solution oriented. So I think by spring, many students were quite um, excited about it and involved in it. And it felt like what it should be, which is you know somewhat student driven. Everything at the university should be like that. What do you see as the, the impact of turn events outside of the turn week? Do you see difference in their behaviors and their perspectives? Absolute honesty. They could be eating more burgers, driving an SUV. I mean, I don't know because I haven't researched that yet. And my dream is to research the arc from one, from the fall turn to the spring turn. You know, just create a simple platform or use one of them that already exists to uh, communicate their commitment and share that and then follow that and then use April turn kind of like a bookend to the academic year, right? And really let people use April as a chance to express what they've accomplished. So it would mean, it would mean they have to keep a log and they have to remember and they have to keep track of like, you know, did I write letters to my representatives? Did I vote? Did I follow legislation? Did I change a personal habit? Did I lobby at a big polluting corporation? You know, in all these different ways, did I march in a protest? right? Did I get involved in the, the public pressure campaigns? You know, so many different things people can do. And it'd be really great for us to be able to know that. So, but the only thing I could measure in the time that we had was the immediate responses of people like pre-event and post-event. At the post-event, there was an evaluation given at the end of each turn event and people had the option to fill it out. So of those that filled it out, we saw people coming into turn events, rating themselves as not alarmed about the climate crisis. And our, one of our goals is to make people more alarmed, not so alarmed that they're paralyzed and they can't act and they're just sitting in a little ball of fear and not so nonchalant that they're just thinking everybody else is going to do something, but somewhere in the middle, you know, seeing that as a good thing was part of what we were um, trying to express is it's okay to be alarmed. It's okay to be anxious because there really is a problem. So we, we measured that and we had, you know, maybe 25% of our audiences coming in saying, I am not at all alarmed or I'm just very, very minimally alarmed. No one left a turn event still saying they were not alarmed or just a little bit. And then a lot of people came in thinking it isn't their problem, like other people are solving it. And then by the time they left the turn event, about 20% more of all the people that came to them overall um, that took the survey said that they understand that they have to do something. Like everybody has to do something. People that came in um, overall said that it was helpful to be among a group of people that were doing things interdisciplinarily for the climate and talking about it from the business perspective, from education, from counseling and psychology, from, you know, from all these different perspectives. As an artist, I'm comfortable with the thought that I don't know what the audience is going to take away. But I know something happens when you make really great art, and I think it's kind of immeasurable on some level. The thing I'm hoping will happen from turn, I hope it will be great art, and I hope that some small shift will happen in every single person's heart, and that combined with the news, combined with the things you guys do, combined with all the other initiatives that they run into and collide with, like turn might be that tipping point, or turn might be that permissive space where they can go, yeah, this is, this is terrible. What are we going to do? We can say that for many of these people, turn events became a turning point for them. Oh, yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> Indeed, I hope. <laughs> I was just curious, is TURN an acronym for something? Refreshingly, it is not an acronym. Um, it stands for a few things though. The, the U is capitalized and that was originally we were thinking about what we really need is a U-turn. We need to make a U-turn for humanity, for the temperature, for racism, for so many things we were going in the wrong direction but u-turn just seemed like you know like a driver's education you know signal so we thought okay turn is nice and being a dancer i was kind of i thought that's neat to use a word that you would use in dance you know you turn right you you, you turn like you have to find balance you have to find momentum you have to like kind of dazzle <laughs> like you know all these things happen in a turn and so that's kind of like ooh, that's what i want it to be um, and then the big U also was for the university. And just to kind of think about this could be a university project. It's, um, it's a model and it could scale up and any university can adopt this idea of, of setting a time frame and giving it space and giving it energy and saying this is when we're going to think about this really, really, really hard thing. It's really, really hard to think about and most people don't want to. So that was where the U came from. And then U, of course, being you, me, us. We need to be a part of it. It's about us. It's about um, intergenerationally, all of us, my age, your age, everybody's age, whoever's alive right now, anyone with a little extra energy or ideas or facility or means or power, I think should be really working on this. This really gets to the heart of what integral ecology is as uh, expressed in Laudato Si. And I'm wondering where you see turn going you know it's kind of a scrappy operation right now and very artisanal and that may be exactly why it might be a good model it's not commercially viable it's not a feel-good event but i feel like it sits squarely in the mission of the university so starting with laudato c if you go to you know the, the website um, in rome they have a thing called the laudato c challenge the challenge was to put laudato c more at the center of the experience of the university so i put laudato c literally at the center of turn week but i put it on wednesday and i thought let's read it for 12 hours straight because at that point last fall scientists were saying we have, we have about 12 years to avoid the accelerated warming loop after which we cannot really do anything when you hear that text read for a few hours or you hear it for 12 hours like i did it really sinks in so this poetic idea of just having a, an hour pass and, and knowing that that symbolizes a year of work we have to do. To me, that was centering Laudato C. Si. And so any university that's in the Jesuit network, it would seem to me, might be just perfectly poised to just do that, to just take that happening that we created. And we did it under a tree in October, and then we did it online for 10 hours in the spring. I think that, you know, TURN is a great model for other Jesuit universities or religiously affiliated universities or universities that are just doing really great work in terms of intellectual humanism, the environment, social justice, um, common good. I really hope that people might reach out to us and maybe attend a few of the TURN events just to get a feel for them. Just show up. Um, make you know, make a point, bring 50 friends and come online and, and watch something and participate in it. And then maybe, you know, the following year we could do some events that the other universities are hosting and just coordinate it all and have kind of like starting with maybe a few countries and maybe make it eventually international. So what would be your message to educators, students all over the world uh, on this crisis that we are facing? My message would be you deserve a centering practice, whether that for you is prayer, meditation, for me it's dance, walking, listening to music, reading. You, you deserve a centering practice and you should strive to cultivate your spiritual depths so that you feel grounded and rooted while literally you know storms <laughs> are coming or are already hitting the covid 19 pandemic has exacted a huge toll already and we all know we're in the middle of it so there's that so many unknowns and then there's that financial crisis looming outside of that of people just not being able to go on without the normal income they get and then there's the racial crisis which has been going on for let's just say all of time 
um, and is coming to a very special head right now in, in history, where the whole world you know, you know, witnessed the horrendous, brutal murder of George Floyd here in the city I'm sitting in right now, Minneapolis. So we're in a new space in all of these three crises. But the climate crisis, it's bigger than all those. I'm not saying it's more important to you, but it's bigger in the sense that it doesn't matter who you are or where you are. It's, we are literally all connected and everything that is alive is connected and we're, we're not taking care of the earth the way we should. So my message would be make sure you're taking care to nourish yourself that spiritual nourishment so that you can have courage. If I had two words, it would be have courage courage live life to its fullest but figure out what fullest means to you and see if inside your heart somewhere in there the desire to think of your future and the next generations is actually stronger than you realized and if this is bugging you if this issue is scaring you keeping you up at night it probably means like your heart's a little broken and so if your heart's broken about this issue, that's a sign that that's where you need to, to move into action and join elbows, you know, link arms with other people and go into action with them in a peaceful way. But I mean, in a serious and strong way too. And all the research shows that conversations about climate crisis are absolutely necessary to solving the climate crisis. If we're not talking about it, there's no way we're going to solve it. So even if you just can get a conversation going with two people that weren't willing to talk about it before, you've done something. You know, there is an agreement in the world about that we want sustainable development. If there is such a thing, we all want it. So I would say let's have courage to, to work together. We hope you were inspired by this initiative at Santa Clara University. An accompanying editorial is available at ecojesuit.com. Please stay tuned for our second episode next month. This has been the Common Good series, Conversations for a More Connected World.